Thank you, Mr. Slocum. I now recognize myself for five minutes. Mr. Chilson, America has what some have described as a golden opportunity to lead in the next generation of AI, but many barriers still exist, as has been mentioned. Um, what, um, what is uh, really holding Amer us back from reaching our full potential, such as securing investment in private capital? So there, there are many uh, challenges for this moonshot, and uh, you know I want to endorse um, uh, Mr. Mills' uh, uh, idea that it's private industry that's going to drive this ahead, uh, and it's Congress's job to build the right launch pad for this moonshot. Um, and so clearing the launch pad is the first thing. Uh, and I think especially in the energy space, uh, permitting processes that slow down the ability to deploy and build new energy, um, not, not in a way that actually achieves, uh, in many cases, the economic or the uh, environmental benefits that we're seeking, but in a way that just drags things out unnecessarily slow and gives veto points to, to people who, are not, who don't necessarily have environmental concerns in hand. But uh, the other big challenge, I think, in this space is uh, a transformation that we're seeing largely at the state level about how we consider uh, software and how we regulate software. And so um, software traditionally has been regulated not directly but indirectly in the uses in which it's put. So, for example, we have regulation on medical devices, which often incorporate, so incorporate software. We have regulation on transportation. Uh, cars are rolling computers at this point. And so when we regulate at the, uh, at the um, uh, use rather than at the general computation level or the general software development level, uh, we get closer to the harm, we get closer to the goals of regulation, and we avoid really unintended consequences. And so states are, are rolling out these big picture regulatory schemes for software. I think that's a real challenge, and uh, I, I think it's something that Congress needs to step in on. Thank you. My other question has to do with the fact that there's been a lot of fear, um, a, a lot of concern or worry about what the potential outcomes might be. But to me, I see um, the potential for for how how our economy is going to pivot and grow, and the and the tremendous opportunities that that we will receive. Um, why do you think Americans should be more excited about? the prospects and the job opportunities that AI might bring than be fearful? Well, I, I think the, uh, you know, why is artificial intelligence important? It's because intelligence is important. And the ability to, to deploy um, new powerful computation to the, some of the most challenging problems that we have as humans, uh, the healthcare space is an amazing example of this. I just saw this morning there is a new paper in Nature that uh, is giving a woman who has not been able to speak for years, she's fully paralyzed, uh, it, can, it can scan her brain and she can speak by thinking the words in her head. And she can speak at 90 words per minute, which is you know, slightly slower than I'm speaking, but not that much, right? And that's really impressive. That is the type of medical benefit that's direct. Outside of that, the economic benefits from efficiency, uh, my written testimony goes into them much more. Uh, trillions of dollars of potential benefit in this space. Thank you. Mr. Levy, um, what are, how do we begin to implement, um, let, actually, let me ask this question. Um, you, you described that uh, we have different, um, that once we unlock um, this technology, that we have some real life examples of services that are uh, stopping us from doing so. Um, how do data centers support, or how, how, what kind of real world examples of regula regulations and, and things that are hindering you from your data centers from moving forward? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the question. And I would tell you that we are seeing a lot of barriers that are holding us back to, from, from moving forward as quickly as we can to meet these demand signals. Uh, clearly, energy permitting is one, and the asynchronous timelines around which data centers can be constructed and uh, potentially operated, but then be energized is, is very much a challenge. We could put a data center facility from uh, you know, groundbreaking to commissioning 18 months to two years. In order to get energy projects online, we're looking at five years of permitting on average, up to seven years for permitting alone for transmission infrastructure. 
We're also seeing some challenges, regulatory barriers when it comes to uh, equipment, uh, particularly electrical equipment. Thank you. Uh, my time has expired.